the degree of this numerator is exactly one degree greater than the denominator. So instead of saving for the end, I'm going to go ahead and do um, my long division right here. 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 into x cubed. It's missing the x squared. Don't forget that placeholder, and it's missing the constant term. Okay? x cubed divided by 3x squared, that's one of those not nice and pretty ones. That gives us one third x. Uh, one third times negative six is negative two x squared. One third times negative nine is negative three x. So when we subtract, we get two x squared minus six x plus zero. And 2x squared divided by 3x squared is 2 thirds. No, I'm not finished with the long division, but really this is all I need for um, my problem. So that is our slant asymptote. 1 third x plus 2 thirds. Bless you. So your y-intercept is 2 thirds, your slope is 1 third. Um, now it might be nice to know that y is 1, so if you want to plot a point at 1, 1, and then do a slope of 1 third from there, 1 over 3, rise 1, run 3, that might give you a more accurate graph there than trying to do y intercept of 2 thirds and go up 1 and over 3 from there. Okay, it goes into the point. <coughs> when we uh, factor. We need to take an x out of the numerator. We're left with x squared minus 9. That's going to factor further. Let's take a 3 out of the denominator. That's going to factor further as well. x squared minus 9 is the difference of perfect squares. x plus 3 times x minus 3 x squared minus 2x minus 3 factors into x minus 3 times x plus 1. So x minus 3 cancels. So that means we have a whole. When x equals 3, we need its y value. We'll get into the simplified version. So those threes cancel, so we get six over four, which is three halves, which is 1.5. Usually I leave it as a fraction, but we've got to graph it. So the decimal is more helpful to us. X is three, Y is one half. That is just below the slant asymptote. Okay, it is just below uh, where the slant asymptote is at that point. I'm trying to make my smaller so that you can actually see that it's a hole. There we go. Make sure that you have a hole there, not a solid point. All right. Vertical asymptote. We are left with 3 times x plus 1 in the denominator. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. dash line at x equals negative 1. Uh, 
Alrighty. X intercept. We're going to have two for this one. Because we had x and x plus 3 left in our numerator, so we have an x intercept of 0, 0. We also have an x intercept of negative 3, 0. So we've got the origin and the point negative 3, 0 for our x intercepts. Well, guess what? If your x intercept is the origin, that's your y intercept as well. When we plug in 0, the result is going to be 0. Now, I'm pretty sure how I can fill in the rest of this graph, but let's go through that uh, behavior around the vertical asymptotes one more time. Let me rewrite the simplified version of my function just so I have it for reference. The simplified version is x times x plus 3 over 3 times x plus 1. So my vertical asymptote is at negative 1. So I'm going to plug in a number close to negative 1, but that's to the left of negative 1. So I'm going to go with, let's just go with negative 1.1. Okay, I did 0.25 last time, so let me do a tenth this time. Nope, yes, yes, negative 1.1. Um, I also need a number to the right of it, so I'm going to make that negative 0.9. When I plug those in to the simplified version of my function, I simply want to know is the result negative or positive. Okay, so the numerator, negative 1.1 plus 3 is positive, but I'm multiplying it by negative 1.1, so that's going to be negative. The denominator, negative 1.1 plus 1 is negative, times 3, so that's still negative, so negative over negative is a positive. So I know that to the left of my vertical asymptote, I am headed towards positive infinity. I need to go through, hit my x-intercept, and hug that slant asymptote right there. When I plug in negative 0.9, I'm going to get a negative over a positive, which is negative. So that means to the right, of my vertical asymptote, I'm going to be headed towards negative infinity. So I'm going to hug my vertical asymptote, go through the origin because that's where my x and my y intercept were. Don't go through your hole. Include the hole in the line, but don't draw through it. And hug your slant asymptote, but don't cross it. And, of course, you can confirm with your calculator, which is what I definitely encourage you to do when we practice these.